Hi friends, welcome to episode 19 of the Work of the Empath podcast. It's been a while since we've had a sound selfie or a featured voice of another, so I just wanted to refresh our understanding on why that's even done. According to neuroscience, there are certain things that we can encounter, and when we do, we feel relieved or strengthened or fortified. A couple examples of that is when you hear your name, when you see someone that has body language similar to yours, when you hear bird song. These are things that signal our subconscious, so we're not even overtly aware of the relaxed state that we can enter when those things happen. We tend to feel perhaps rapport with the person that's involved, and we are disarmed. And it's a great feeling. In the case of people that are highly sensitive, highly perceptive, that have very refined nervous systems, Western culture has been slower to reward that sensibility, that physiology, that way of being. And frankly, I got tired of it. And that's why I was like, you know what? I want to hear more sounds. (laughs) So that anyone who understands themselves to be that way can feel strengthened. And those who love people like that could gain greater insight. That's really my goal is in inviting and producing these sound selfies. So it's been a while since our last one, and um, I'm extra excited to introduce you to our next one, our next featured voice, which is Tammy Roth, PhD. Tammy is a highly creative being who was trained as a psychotherapist but now works as a soul coach. She's passionate about assisting women with deep listening to their soul through creativity, accessing the quantum field, family constellations, dream work, kundalini yoga, and accepting their divine feminine gifts. Hello, welcome. The Work of the Empath podcast intends to be a fertile oasis in difficult places. May you hear and receive exactly what you need. Hi, I am an empath and I'm also a recovering addict. And sometimes I wonder if I should say I'm a recovering addict or I am a recovered addict. Because really at this point in my journey, what feels most true to me is I've, I have recovered from addiction because that is, that is just a path that is absolutely closed to me now. Um, but I will always, I believe, be recovering my truest sense of self, I'll always be recovering my, my most authentic self, because I think that's just part of the human journey. Part of being an empath is, you know, just always going deeper. So, so I'm fine with always, you know, with saying I'm a person in recovery. Um, But at this point in my journey, the addiction just feels like it was a symptom that got me on a path of just profound transformation, um, profound change, and really getting in touch with and owning the gifts that come with being an empath. Um, You know, I think I've experienced a lot of the struggle that comes with being an empath, because that that can also be true um, if I'm not taking care of myself. But self-care has absolutely become a non-negotiable on my path to recovery because self-care is like a matter of life and death for me as a recovering person. But back to being an empath. This is actually somewhat new information for me. I only discovered I was an empath when I got sober 12 years ago. And if you had asked me before I got sober if I was highly sensitive or an empath, I would have said 
absolutely not that I was the opposite of that. And it would have been true to some point because I was so defended and armored up um, that you would not have been able to access my sensitivity. And, you know, it, it was a coping mechanism from a very early age. You know, I know now that I came into the world as a very sensitive being. But being in a um, highly dysfunctional family, it was not sustainable for me to stay that open and sensitive. Um, so some part of me had had the good sense to bring on the armor and toughen up so that I could survive. And then at a very, very young age, I turned to food as a way of comfort and numbing. Um, and then it was cigarettes and then alcohol and Adderall and ecstasy and all the things, you know, relationships, um, work, all the things that can distract and keep me numbed out. I was um, very much on the track of those things. But then when that path was not working anymore and it was time to heal when I knew the, the gig was up and it was time to get sober and get serious about my life, then I quickly discovered like just how empathic I was. And at first it, it was just, you know, pretty annoying because it felt like a, I was such a raw nerve, but it didn't take me long to figure out like what gifts came with that. I had no idea that I was so creative, um, intuitive, I had no idea like how spiritually attuned I just naturally am. And now choosing to live life from this really creative, inspired way has, um, it's just profound. It's so profound. And, and now I understand the gifts that, that really come with being an empath when I honor those gifts, um, because it, it takes it takes commitment to that because you know I live in a world where that that is not honored and it is not revered so it's up to me to really claim how much self-care I require and not not feel shame or or judge myself over that and it's taken a while for me to get to that point um because the family and community I grew up in, it's, you know, uh, a lot of judgment around being high maintenance um, or being seen as selfish. And, you know, those things hold no charge for me now. Hell yeah, I'm high maintenance because I am like a, I don't know, um, a really expensive car. You know, I'm a Jaguar or something like that. That's how I view it. It's like this body houses... A beautiful soul and so of course I'm really going to take care of this and nurture myself but again it didn't it didn't start out that way um, and through the years I've also I've worked with a lot of people who struggle with addiction and as far as with women what I've discovered is most all the women that I've encountered who struggle with addiction are empaths I mean, it just kind of comes with the territory when you're feeling and able to tune in to so much around you. And especially if it's not nurtured and it's dysfunction around you, then it becomes almost a necessity to, to numb it out. So I really view it now with compassion. It's like, wow, good for me that I had enough sense to get myself out of that pain until that way didn't work anymore. And then recovery came into, into the picture. One story that really opened my eyes to like just how sensitive I was as a little kid. You know, as, like I said, I didn't... I didn't realize this about myself until after getting sober. And I realized that I'd had this memory all through my life. I've had this flash of when I was about four or five years old, being in the back seat of a car in this little bitty um, 
town in Kentucky that I lived in and looking out the window and like when I have it was just this barren landscape and when I have that flash of that memory it's just a, a real deep sense of impending doom and for years I thought wow you know what happened in the back seat of that car because there's nothing else that goes with it and so I've just I thought oh I've got some repressed memory around abuse or something like that and then a year or so ago I heard a John Prine song called Paradise and the lyrics were take me back to Muhlenberg County and that was literally the county I lived in in Kentucky and he goes on through the song talking about Mr. Peabody and when I heard Peabody all of a sudden I, I got a flash of the logo on the side of um, the heavy equipment of Peabody coal mining and Anyway, hearing this song was such a gift to me because what it did is it took me back to the memory of being a little girl looking out the car window and seeing the earth raped, absolutely raped. It was strip mining, coal mining, where they just stripped the earth bare and it was just, it was so painful as a little four-year-old to look out and see that. And so once I heard that song, I was on one hand relieved to know oh no I wasn't like abused in the back seat of that car but then I was so deeply sad that I witnessed that happening to the earth but also so deeply sad that there was no adult around me that saw my sensitivity nobody who said oh what's wrong I see you look sad you know nobody I could share that empathic response I was having with and so that memory has just really been poignant for me, like just understanding like how sensitive I am. And, and I still now, I'm constantly having to remind myself just how sensitive I am and not use that word with condemnation or judgment, but like really revere that part of myself. Um, I'm very tuned in to the moon cycles and the new moon. Like I've just, I finally, after many years, figured out, oh, every time a new moon comes around and we go into that dark phase, my energy is gonna be down and I'm gonna be more introspective. And sometimes I can even go pretty dark. And it's because of this amazing gift I have of being tuned in to the cosmos. How amazing is that? Um, so now I'm, when that comes around, it's like, oh yeah, it's new moon. It's new moon time. So yeah, just give myself the gift of feeling that and really being able to go within and be with myself during that time. Um, but it, yeah, it's very much been an educational process of discovering who I am and what this really highly attuned sensitive nervous system that I carry around like what that means and how to best use my gifts to serve the world in this time of rapid evolution so there's also a balance with that it's like okay I want to use my gifts to serve but if I don't take care of this highly attuned nervous system I'm gonna have nothing to give so there's always this balancing act and then I'm also really, really passionate about helping other women discover this about themselves and then discover it and really working on giving ourselves permission to nurture and care for ourselves in the way that is needed. And then the most exciting part is to like really tap in to the creative life force energy that is flowing through every single one of us, but for the highly empathic, it's like getting on that path of creativity and really tuning into that life force energy just becomes so life-giving and a whole other topic that would be for another podcast probably is recognizing that by staying in that creative flow, that that is keeping me in tune to life itself. and 
If I am in this constant creative flow with my right brain, then I am very much co-creating with the universe. So I am so grateful now that addiction was the thing that got my attention and got me on the right path of learning how to take care of my really sensitive and highly attuned nervous system and deep knowing. Without addiction, I don't know, I don't know if I would be where I am today. And you know, of course there was a lot of struggle through the years with that, but man, the other side of it is just beyond anything I could have imagined. So, so I really am grateful because I might have just, you know, just gone through life without this awareness, but I am very, very grateful for the entire journey, every bit of it. And I'm also grateful to be able to just share my story and what it's like to keep keep discovering this part of myself and, and really also, you know, like the latest parts that I've discovered is finding my own rhythm and what a gift the the pandemic has been to finding that rhythm because about six months before the pandemic hit I was already getting a message over and over from my higher self from my guides that it was time for me to slow down slow down no even more slow down and so then when the pandemic hit I was already kind of in that slow place and I've just continued to slow down even more and more and more and I'm just at this place now of feeling like how tightly wound I've lived my whole life all based on this culture that we live in that is so production oriented and overachieving and go 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 and and just how non-life giving that has been for me you know, staying stressed and adrenal fatigued and not to, you know, not to mention addicted. So anyway, just like really learning the slower pace is just so affirming and mm, I don't want to say luxurious because I really don't want to view it as a luxury to go slow. I think it's a natural state. And we live in a culture that says it's a luxury to slow down. And I just want to call bullshit on that because I think this slower state really is our natural state and especially for an empath. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm learning a lot. I continue learning a lot and it's pretty exciting, especially at this time to be alive on the planet and seeing all the changes and finally being in a place where being sensitive and empathic is beginning to become more mainstream, I guess. Well, I don't know, mainstream might be a stretch, but at least it's becoming more recognized and we are seeing each other in these strengths and really trying to support each other in it just like Erica having this podcast I mean what a gift it I love listening because it just is these are the kind of things I need to listen to to remind me yeah that's who I am and that's who I want to be and I want to claim this so so a lot of gratitude to Erica for having this podcast and um gratitude to myself that I'm willing to talk about it and share my experience. So I thank you for listening. And I hope I get to learn about your experience along the way too. The longer we are subjected to rather inhuman or dehumanizing protocols, I think that being able to hear such rich offerings like Tammy just shared is all the more important. It feels like a missing nutrient that's gone from our diet. So I am really, really grateful that Tammy shared that sound selfie. 
And, and I hope that it would inspire some of you listening to do likewise. Something as simple as sharing a story can be empowering and freeing for you and for someone listening to you. There is a link I'll leave in the show notes, as well as Tammy's website, which is TammyRoth.com. And that'll be linked as well. And I invite you to explore the services that she offers. They look and feel very inviting. So with that, I thank you so much for listening. And this may sound cheesy, but it is true. I hope that we fall deeper in love with ourself so that we can be better lovers of each other. Be the cause and not the effect. Our thoughts and words the world reflects. This show has been brought to you by EmpathicWriter.com.